out at Carroll on Monday, for Kate turning 19 on Monday, for uh, a great anniversary service last week, for a great junior leader workshop yesterday. We also thank you, God, for Don and Ann being able to come back and see them at worship today. We thank you for the awesome community in which we live that comes together to have a rodeo that supports so many local businesses, as well as the way people support each other. We thank you for the weather. We thank you that as uh, Patsy and Stephen were driving around in their van, the tire didn't fall off and is now fixed. And God, we also thank you for Heather, who was able to uh, get her PhD in biological research. God, I also thank you for Laura and I having been able to be here for almost uh, 31 years, this being our 31st wedding anniversary, and as of the 1st of, the, of July, we will have completed 31 years of ministry here. Thank you, God, for all of those blessings. And yet, Lord, so often we struggle. So often we want to be, even though we're the pot and you're the potter, we want to shape you to serve our will rather than us conforming to yours. And so, God, forgive us for this sin or for any other sins that come to our hearts and minds. Lord, hear our silent prayers of confession. God, we thank you for your grace and forgiveness. It allows us to come to you as we are, and your love and the work of your Holy Spirit that helps us to become the people you want us to be. Continue your good work within us as we sing together in praise for you this morning. Amen. Our opening hymn is entitled, As the Deer.
gifts of time, talents, and treasures. So let us stand and sing the offertory as the offerings are brought forth. Their high officials 
exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And then he goes on to say, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Folks, our fathers have mostly taught us how to serve. And that means that as we grow up, hey, did any of you ever get your dad or your mom get you to help with chores? Name one example. Anybody? What well, one example? I have new cat pens, but anybody else besides cat pens? Catherine. Pardon? Oh, you got to do pink pins. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Anybody else want to do some of the other rest of you done? Washing dishes. Washing dishes, absolutely. And in doing so, you are learning how to serve, how to be great in God's kingdom. That's why we invite you as summer team to, you know, clean up garbage at a rodeo. Even though it's a dirty, annoying job, Try to make it ready. And yes, I enjoyed you at 4.30 this afternoon. Remember, 4.30, I don't want to be the only one there. Because it is Father's Day, and I'm going out afterwards. All right. Um, yeah, and so it's important that we be, as God's people, people who serve. Because that's what makes us great. Let's pray, and I will invite everyone to repeat after me. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the people in our lives who serve us, for this makes them great, and Lord, bless the fathers in our lives, continue to give them wisdom on how to serve, and help us learn how to serve others ourselves, amen. We're going to sing a song. Let's leave that for later. Uh, the worship group team, uh, some of them, the summer team is going to um, lead some of them and lead us in the singing of the heart of worship. Let's stand and sing.
gone up. So I want to introduce to you this year's summer team. And uh, Carol, if you stand at this end, we'll start with you. So I'm going to ask each of you to say your name. So who are you? What are you excited about this summer? And what do you hope to bring to the team and should be on? And who are you? I'm Mercedes. Um, I'm excited that, same as Caroline, we're having a more normal, normal summer and um, COVID restrictions have lifted for most of our camps. Um, uh, I am the lifeguard for this summer and uh, I also am uh, in school for music education, so I have a lot of music skills as well. And just while we're pausing, if you've heard that there's a shortage of lifeguards, that true? If you know of a lifeguard, we would covet them. Not in the sinful way, but we might want to give them money to do something to help. Hello, I'm Angela and Kiana, and I'm the electric captain for the summer. And uh, I'm really excited, yeah, that uh, COVID restrictions are going away, so we're finally having overnight camps and getting to go back to Erie Beach. So I'm so excited for that. And I bring like initiative and Don't worry about the order on the sheet, just go with it's everything. My name is Rare and um, something I'm excited for this summer is not get paid. Um, <laughs> I think I bring enthusiasm and positivity to the team. Hi, I'm Autumn Brissett. I'm excited to meet the campers and reconnect with all campers. And I bring first aid skills and sports and being able to connect with the more um, difficult campers of this is Hi, I'm Kate. Um, I'm excited uh, to be able to meet more new campers and to hang out with them and have a lot of fun. And I bring creativity and adaptability to the team. Um, hi, I'm Shaylee and I'm excited just to be busy and uh, hang out with campers this summer. And then um, I'm Jane. I'm excited that all the camps are going to be back tomorrow this summer because it's my first year on staff and I think I bring some useful talent to the team. Excellent. So if you're a first year staff, put your hand up. Yes, so welcome. Uh, with the COVID cutting down LITs in the middle of it, we are really glad to see you. Because we have a smaller team, we can only run one camp per week. So we get parents calling, oh, are you not running this camp? I want to send my kid to this camp or that camp. Well, pray for more LITs. So far we have three from our area. So that would be really good for next year. Carolyn, we have shirts. Why don't you and somebody hold the mic and you explain the shirts. Because 
God has made common covenants with us as human beings, we take covenants very seriously. We make covenants between ourselves and God in baptism or confirmation. We make covenants with other people before God in marriage or in ordination. Today, we as a church are making a covenant with our summer team. They are planning to work for us to do ministry this summer, and we promise to support them in our prayers with pay and help them as, as we are gifted by God. Romans 12, 4 to 10 reads this. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of her gives of her faith. If service, in serving. Or he who teaches in their teaching, or those who exhort in their exhortation, those who give to give with liberality, those who lead with diligence, and those who show mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor the evil, cling to what is good, and to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. At this time, I invite the congregation to please stand. As these young people have demonstrated natural talents and spiritual gifts to be hired to uh, run camps this summer, so we as a congregation with family and friends who promise in the presence of God to, one, pray for these young people that they may be strengthened by God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to keep, to help them in the work of His kingdom and grow in Christian leadership, two, to pay for these young people's salaries so they will have the time to serve God this summer, and three, to help support the ministries undertaken by our church through the summer team, that God's work may be fathered in our community and world. If you believe in this and support this, please answer, yes, we do. Yes, we do. And as members of the summer team, I see you have some vows. I can only go so far. And as members of the summer team, we promise to pray daily for the So at this time, I'd like to invite you guys, you guys are dressed, and you know what, don't kneel, we'll just come pray over you. If you're out there, please put your hands toward these people, Pastor, do you want to come up? And I'll take this end, and you take the other end, and we'll lay hands on them on behalf of the church. And let's pray, and I'll just pray uh, of one prayer. Our loving God, as you have gifted and called these young people to work to your work this summer, fill them with your Holy Spirit that they may have your divine power flowing through them for the work of your kingdom this summer that may bring about positive responses to the Lord and the people they need, wherever they may serve you now and in the future. Bless them. Give them the strength they need when they are tired. Give them the wisdom they need when challenges arise. Give them growth this summer as Christian leaders so they may discover the joy of serving you, God, their neighbor. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father, and everyone said together, Amen. Thank you folks very much. You can go back to your seat. Get out of your way.
demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him, and they begged him repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was, were, was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into them, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went, into, went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of Jerusalem asked Jesus to leave them, because they were overcome with fear, so he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. Five days later, the high priest and the elders went back to Caesarea uh, with some of the elders and the Lord named Tertullus, and they brought their charges against Paul before the governor. When Paul was called in, Tertullus presented his case before Felix. We have enjoyed a long period of peace under you, and your foresight has brought about the forms in this nation. Everywhere and in every way, most excellent Felix, we acknowledge this with profound gratitude. But in order not to weary you further, I would request that you be kind enough to hear us briefly. We have found this man to be a troublemaker, stirring up riots among the Jews all over the world. He is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect, and even tried to desecrate the temple. So we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn the truth about all these charges we are bringing against him. The Jews joined in the accusation, asserting that these things were true. When the governor motioned for him to speak, Paul replied, I know that for a number of years you have been a judge over this nation, so I gladly make my defense. You can easily verify that no more than twelve days ago I went to Jerusalem to worship. My accusers did not find me arguing with anyone in the temple, or stirring up the crowd in the synagogues, or anywhere else in the city. And they cannot prove to you the charges they are now making against me. However, I admit that I worship the God of our fathers as a follower of the way, which they call a sect. I believe everything that agrees with the law and that is written in the prophet. Uh, in the prophets, and I have the same hope in God as these men, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. So, I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. After an absence of several years, I came to Jerusalem to bring my people gifts for the poor and to present offerings. I was ceremonially clean when they found me in the temple courts doing this. There was no crowds with me, nor was I involved in any disturbance. But there are some Jews from the province of Asia who ought to be here before you and bring charges if they have anything against you. Or, they have, uh, or these who are here should state what crimes they found in me when I stood before the Sanhedrin. Unless it was this one thing I shouted as I stood in their presence. It is concerning the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. Then Felix, who was well acquainted with the way, adjourned the proceedings. When uh, Lysias, the commander of the comes, he said, I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, or to give him some freedom and permit his friends to take care of his needs. Several days later, Felix came with his wife, Priscilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and listened uh, to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul discoursed on the righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough now. You may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bride. So he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, Felix was, uh, was succeeded by Precious Festus. But because Felix wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison.
By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. Prayers to God. My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. In today's story, Jesus and his 
disciples he crossed to the other shore of the Sea of Galilee, out of the province of Galilee, into this other province, which is really hard to pronounce, and I'm going to skip it. Way to go, Mercedes, you did well. According to Matthew, on their way across, there was a storm on the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was sleeping. The disciples all thought they were going to die until they woke up Jesus and he spoke and he calmed the storm. The disciples were not feeling very much in control before any of this story starts. And then they come upon this man running naked, living amongst the tombs at the cemetery. Can you imagine how people would respond if we had a naked man living among the tombs down in south of Allison in our cemetery? And when you try to bring him under control, he'd just break the chains? To hear such stories of people's lives out of control is scary and terrifying and sad all at the same time. But Jesus met him. Jesus cast the demons out. Now the demons said, uh, don't cast this. And it's interesting. The demons knew who Jesus was. And Jesus said, well, who are you? Well, we're a legion. Because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus not to cast them into abyss, to put them into the pigs. So Jesus cast them into the pigs. And then the pigs ran down the hill into the sea and died. And probably the demons ended up in the abyss anyway. Resisting God's will is a little bit like trying to resist the weather. You can complain about it all you want, it just doesn't do any good. The people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus and they saw the man who lived a life out of control, dressed and in his right mind, I would have thought as a kid when I heard this story, my goodness, we want Jesus. He's somebody we want to hang around with. But the crowd said, go away, Jesus. They asked him to leave. Now why did they ask him to leave? Because if Jesus hangs around, he messes up our plans. He has his own plans. On many levels, this story is bizarre. But what I think is fascinating is the man who got healed wanted to go with Jesus, and Jesus said, no, stay here. And go tell everybody how God has helped you. Even though they didn't want Jesus around, that man just living his life with clothes on, dressed, and having his life together was a witness to the power of God that the people could not could not deny. Folks, that's what God wants of us. To be signs and symbols that God actually is real. Camp staff, remember this. When your carefully crafted activities at camp start falling apart because the campers have other plans. Don't panic. Don't get angry. But adapt and look for God's leading. This is how we get stories of God's providing. And He will provide. So what attitude should we have? Well, let's look at the other story about Paul. Paul was trying to pass on the faith to the Gentiles in this great ministry, and he gets himself arrested. He's put on trial by Felix, and he describes how he really didn't do anything that they said he did. And then Felix just keeps him in prison. Oh, he allows his friends to come and take care of him, and he called Paul to talk with him frequently. Apparently he was interested, or at least interested in Paul giving him a bribe, which he didn't. But did Paul get angry? Did he get frustrated and hostile that his plans of how to reach out to the Gentiles had been foiled? This is what Paul wrote. While he was in prison, most likely not here, in Philippi, or in, uh, not at Caesarea, but he wrote this to the Philippians. I know what it is to be in need, I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through Christ who gives me strength. 
No change in our circumstances will make our lives better. It is trusting that God will lead us. Paul just changed. He started reaching out to uh, Felix and trying to help him understand who Jesus was. He wrote letters to the early church to support and encourage the ministry that was going on. Paul did not get angry and bitter. He adapted. Folks, in the days that we are dealing with, we are going to have to adapt. We've already been adapting as we've been in COVID. As we're coming out of it, we're still going to have to adapt. Because guess what? Life is always changing. And learning to live at peace without being in control comes from trusting in the Lord. Trusting enough so that somebody like Kahari Williams, Willis, sorry, Kahari Willis, would walk away from millions of dollars to play football to go and teach people about Jesus. To secular people, it sounds crazy. But it doesn't if we know and understand Jesus. Because he's storing up for himself treasures in heaven, not on earth. So whether Jesus helps us with surprises, like the helpless demoniac who suddenly becomes in his right mind, and then has really cool stories to tell about God's providing, or whether we just need to adapt as Paul did while in custody and telling God's stories to Felix and writing letters that made up much of the New Testament, we need to be okay with what happens as we live by faith. Inner hope and peace comes from trusting the Lord and His plans, even if we don't know what they are. Is that easy? Absolutely not. But if we day by day learn to trust God, He can lead us. And that's what God wants for us. We're living in a time when people try to control others and the situations around them, and they're failing miserably and they're getting grumpy, and it leads to all kinds of conflict. Let's not do that. Let's put our faith in God and adapt. Even if sometimes it appears to secular people like we're doing crazy things. Let's pray. Lord, as you provided for us in the past, please provide for us now. Help previous blessings to grow trust enough in you that whether we are trying to live as servants, uh, as fathers and mothers or family members or as camp staff, that we can trust in you. And in the end, we'll have stories to tell. Stories that may be as dramatic as the healing of the Domaniac or as simple as Paul adapting and being content in all of the circumstances. Lord, teach us to just day by day and bit by bit grow in our faith in you. Amen. Oh yeah. Um, let's do the singing of faith of our fathers, so then pray and have our benediction. So let's stand and sing.
Lord Jesus, on this Father's Day Sunday and our summer team dedication, we thank you for your blessings and ask for your continued blessings. God, as we seek the plan for the ham summer camps, we need your help. We thank you that for the last 24 years, we are about to begin our 25th summer camp. And so bless each of our staff, our volunteers, our campers, and that everyone may be growing and being blessed this summer. We also thank you for the fathers in our lives. Bless them and give them and us wisdom on how to grow in service and therefore be great in your kingdom. Lord, we also ask that you bless our government leaders federally, provincially, and municipally. We continue to thank you for the decline of the virus and hospitalization and ask that it will continue. We ask that you bless the farmers who are facing everything from water damage to wind damage over the weather. And God, we also pray for our local ministries. We thank you that as youth group and Sunday school will be slowing down a bit for the summer. We pray that our summer camps and the planning would fill up and go on. We thank you and think of the junior leaders from yesterday who are going to be learning to serve and become great in the kingdom. We pray for the rodeo, that it would be safe and good and that you'd be with those uh, camp staff who were able to be there to clean up this afternoon for the last time. Meanwhile, God, we pray for those in our churches and congregations dealing with ongoing health problems. We think of Jenny Chaluka who had her knee or ankle surgery this past week. We thank you that all went well and we ask you to help her to recover quickly and effectively. We pray, pray as, as well for um, anyone dealing with any health problems or having to adapt to change. We think of those young people who are graduating, whether it's from elementary school, secondary school, or even Heather with her PhD, and that you would be with them as they go on to new and different adventures next time. Finally, Lord, even though we've mentioned a bunch of things, there are many other things to be praying about. So, Lord, hear our silent prayers that we lift to you now. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers and answer according to your will, power, and might. We ask in Jesus' name as we pray together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. We go in the love of God the Father, the teachings and forgiveness of Jesus the Son, and the invisible help of God's Holy Spirit as we sing our benediction together.